Hey everybody, this is Pam at the Paper Outpost. Welcome, welcome to Craft Chat and making all, um, altered paper clips today. Uh, I'm gonna be using a little host of t old uh, vintage tickets as well as my little store of punched out images and things like that. I don't know what I'm gonna be making, but they're all gonna be paper uh, clip, altered paper clips by the time I'm done. And uh, so I thought I'd answer your crafty questions here and make some altered paper clips at the same time. If you want to gather your things and join me, I would love to have you along for the ride. Oh, oh, big news. Guess what? In June, all of June of 2022, if you purchase a fundle, you will also receive a free digi kit, a limited edition digi kit that will never be available in my Etsy shop. Um, this is a special digi kit. The actual name of it is called Flower Legends, and uh, I'm going to show it to you here. It's five pages of very, very beautiful imagery, and uh, this will be a bonus uh, that everybody receives if you buy a fundal in June of 2022. Now, there is no special code. There is no special password. There's no secret backdoor uh, handshake or knock or anything like that. You just automatically get it. I wanted to make it easy for everybody. Um, I did put a notice about it in my June free monthly email newsletter. Uh, and uh, this is my first official public announcement about it. But um, so if you're interested in that or you're thinking, are oh, you been on the fence about a fundal? This may be um, uh, reason to do so, June of 2022. So there you go. I hope you like this. And aren't some of these images just gorgeous? I mean, look how pretty that is. Um, so yes, all very beautiful, very extremely old imagery. So there you go, folks. The fun goes on with the fundals. That's right. Always trying to add a little more excitement. Okay. So um, got my uh, paper clips, my tickets, and my punchies, and I got my glue. And the first question goes to Judy Gullet. She's asking, love, in the video that was actually titled My June Digi Kits Plus Craft an Easy Envelope with No Cutting um, video, uh, she asked, love those butterflies. Is this a journal a hidden spine? And I believe she is referring to... This, oh, can't see squat, can you? Let me back up a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. This journal, you still can't see much. Let me back up a little bit more. Uh, okay, I can work my phone. Come on, little phone. Okay, here we go. No, come on, phone, work with me. No, you're not, that's it. You, you don't want to go in. Okay, uh, maybe I have to back up. Okay, whatever. I'll, I'll work with you. I think she's referring to this one. Um, this is what I call an exposed spine. Yeah, so if I can see the strings on the outside, I call it an exposed spine. Now, an easy way to turn an exposed spine to a hidden spine is you just cover it up. And I put eight tips on easy uh, things that you can put onto a spine on a junk journal to decorate it. And uh, that's in my free monthly email newsletter in June. If you haven't signed up for that newsletter yet, I highly recommend it. Even if you sign up now or anytime through June, you will receive the June uh, newsletter uh, I think the day after, pretty much, if you sign up one day, you, I'll set, I usually check it every day to see who has signed up, and then I send it out for that any every day of that month. So, this is um, this is an exposed spine, but it could be turned into a hidden spine by maybe putting a piece of lace or something like that down. It would be very pretty. Okay, so there you go. All right, next question. Okay, we're going to make a paper clip. Here we go. This is a very simple technique. I've shown this already, but I just need to make a bunch of these. So, so here we are. I've got my paper clip, which is about a one and seven eighths paper clip. I put the little, um, now you're too far away. Come closer, come closer. Um, the little loop on the inside. These are the fold over tickets. Uh, all right, and then I'm just gonna glue. This is Fabrifix glue. Fabric to fabric, fabric to paper, paper to paper. And I'm just squashing, and there I'm done. I'm just gonna adjust to make sure it's situated straight. But it's a pretty easy, simple, fast process. Uh, you can do this with a lot of things. It doesn't have to be a ticket if you don't have tickets. So we'll make some other ideas as well. Next question, Teresa Hartman asks, are we recording? Yes, no, she didn't ask that. She asked this. <laughs> Okay, she's also referring to the same uh, June Digi Kits plus a craft plus craft an easy envelope with no cutting video. Um, and she's referring specifically to my Unicorns Are Real Digi Kit, which is a new one for June. She says, that whale-like creature with a horn is an actual animal that exists called a narwhal. It, ex it is in existence now. I was floored when I learned that. If that can be real, why not a horse-like creature with a horn? Hey, I'm with you. I'm with you, Teresa. Why not? Um, 
I would like to believe unicorns are real because I think the world would be a happier place. Yes. Okay. There we go. Um, okay. Now we have another question. I, okay. I need to make a, I need to make, oh, this one will be pretty. Yeah. Let's, let's, this is just a punched out heart and then we need a back. Nothing needs to be fancy or foo-foo or anything like that. That's pretty. That look, it'd be nice if I show you. That looks nice like that, or I could even do it like that. That's very pretty. Look at that. Okay. So let's see. Maybe I should get my bucket of small ones too, because sometimes a small one is exactly what you need. Yeah, it's exactly what you need. And I like to save a lot of these, um, you know, Russian vocabulary cards, something like that. These little sturdy boxes. Uh, tops or bottoms doesn't matter they're just a darn cute and uh put the small one on the inside i don't know why i just think that's important and i'm going to glue that on top so let me just put some glue down this is me gluing this is what it looks like in action regular uh crafty person just gluing okay and um some of these now remember you've got a little gap in between there because yeah you can't see anything i went up Okay, because there's a metal thing, Oops, see, see how it opens? You want to make sure it stays closed so you can stay here and hold that for an hour, which it doesn't really take an hour. Or, 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 you can go back to your drawer and you can pull out your other little, <laughs> you could actually use paper clips to do this. Uh, you really don't need, you could paper clip it. You just paper clip it with other paper clips until it's dry and then it'll, it'll all stick together. I don't really like paper clipping it. All this, this is extra fuss fuss, unnecessary, but it will work in a pinch. Okay, and then I would take those off when it's dry. I'm backing up now. Whoop, okay. And um, so this is my other little cubby of unusual paper clips or clip-like things. Yeah, that's what that is. Okay, so what do we got now? We've got another question. Okay, this is Weird Iron Guy 37. I should really pre-read these, but I don't. I just go deep. I'm nervous. <laughs> okay. All right, so, oh, okay, this uh, person is asking how to set an eye, uh, referring to the video called How to Set an Eyelet with the Crocodile 2 Big Bite for Junk Journals. Okay, he or she asks, which is the best, the first one or this one? I heard this one has problems. Okay, so here's the deal. Okay, uh, let me show you the difference between Crocodile, the original Crocodile, and then the Cropodile 2 Big Bite. This is the original Cropodile. This is the Cropodile 2 Big Bite, okay? Now, they both do the same thing, except one has a longer reach. This one punches holes. See where that little hole thing is there? It'll, it'll punch a hole there. See the, the punch? Okay, can you see the punch going up and down? Um, it'll also punch on this side, okay, as you're squeezing. Okay, see the little, little punch there? little punchy thing that's a smaller hole okay um, punches holes and sets eyelets okay this does the exact same thing this um, depend you have to move this thing this tells you what you're doing you're punching a hole your bigger hole you're punching a smaller hole oh I think the no that's 3 16 that's the bigger hole <sighs> okay Move it to the middle. That's the smaller hole. No, you can't see any of this, can you? Smaller hole. That's the one eighth. And then all the way to the left is the eyelet squasher right here. Get my finger out of there because I'm going to squash it. Okay. See that? See, I'm squashing the eyelet. Now, these things is why people say it causes a problem. Um, okay. So if you had a piece of paper, like a junk journal, and you wanted to punch deep or you wanted to... Um, squash deep with an eyelet uh, to be set or punch deep into a piece of paper or in the middle of a journal, something like that. This one gives you ability to have that reach into the center of the book. Whereas you can't do that with the original Crocodile or what I call Crocodile number one. Okay, so that's basically the difference. Both function properly. My little tip or trick is I've tried every combination and I got exhausted reading the manual and the other videos out there. So the easiest thing I can tell you, if you set it so that the silver flying saucer is on the bottom and the big nipple is on the top, the silver big nipple is on the top, you can squash a 3 16th eyelet. There you go. 3 th 3 16th inch eyelet. 
pretty easily. And the fact that it has a long arm gives you the strength of a thousand men or women or wombats and you can just squash easily. So I wouldn't say it's more prob problematic. I think once you kind of figure out how to use these little things that turn around, it actually becomes your best friend. Actually, this is probably the tool that I cannot live without for junk journal making because punching holes in junk journals is probably the most cumbersome thing for me. It's the most laborious. It's uh, hand exhausting. I get very frustrated when pages move around and things go up and down and, and I can't, I, I don't have a nice, I can't find the hole, you know what I mean? I'm looking for it. Or if I punch a hole with an awl or um, uh, a pokey tool, then I get that little psh on the other side. You know, you turn the paper over and it's got this psh looking at you of paper. You don't really have that with this. This just gives you a nice clean punch. Oh, look, there I am. Hello, everybody. <laughs> okay. <laughs> um, so anyway, everybody's different. It's kind of like glue. Everybody has a favorite glue and we all have our little idiosyncrasies, why we like a certain glue, why we don't like a certain glue. Crocodiles are the same way. Some people are hardcore awl or pokey tool or needle punchers, okay? And they're happy with that and that's great. Um, you gotta find out what works for you. There you go, that's my best answer. Okay, um, okay. Diane, uh, oh no, we have to make, we have to make, cause I have to make progress here. Okay, let me, let me try and make some progress. Oh, I think I was working with these the other day. That was very nice. This cute little birdie do. Yeah, let's, let's make you into something. I feel like I need a, why is it when, you know, you're the paper up post and you can't find a piece of paper for the life of you? You know what I mean? What is that? You can't find a piece of paper. All right. No, no, no. Can I use you? No, not the right one. How about this? I punched you out. That could work. Oh, that could be pretty. I think I want to ink you, though. Yeah, you knew there was going to be some inking going on here, right? Right? Okay. Let's see. What we, I've got some. This is walnut stain. Can you read that? Walnut stain. Mm-hmm. What a shocker, huh? I know. I know. Okay. We dig. Dig rifling. Rifling. Digging. Can't be far. I put them all away. Uh, no, that's green. Where's my brown? Oh, come on. There it is. Buried. Can you imagine that? There it is. How do I know it's my brown? Because I tied a little brown ribbon or uh, embroidery floss to it. Because sometimes when they get dirty, they all sort of look the same. Yeah. Uh, especially when you cross pollinate. That happens a lot to me. All right. Now, this is probably from a field guide. And uh, we had a lot of fun field guides. You can really do things with them. Um, see. Well, that looks kind of pretty. I'll just put you like that. I mean, it doesn't have to be oriented perfectly or anything like that. It could be off to the side. It could be a little uh, like that. That would be nice. Okay, let's get the paper clip in place. Let's use maybe a small one because these oddball shapes might work better with a small one. There, that's very nice. I'm liking that a lot. Okay. All right, I'm going to put some glue down here. I like to cross over the paper clip so the paper clip gets nice and positioned. Let's hope we don't have too much glue on here. All right, I think this will be good. And this one we don't need to put a um, uh, paper clip to paper clip the paper clip like we had to here. You know what I mean? Okay, I think this is ready to come off. Yeah, there. Oh, we're free. We're free. Okay, good. Um, why? Why? Because the page on front is from a field guide. It's a regular like page, a thinner page, and the back one gives the strength. So there's no, the front page um, wraps itself very easily over that little paper clip. So no extra bonding needed there or binding. Okay, next question. All right, uh, Diane uh, Chidester, Chidester. Um, is there any way, okay, she's referring to the, again, the June DigiKit plus craft and easy envelope video. Is there, am I recording? Yeah, I always have that fear. Is there any way you could make, you would make the copy you would make the copy and sell them that way. I don't have a printer. Um, I think she's referring to DigiKits. Can I um, print them and, for you? And yes, I have heard your call and, and you are not alone. I know there are many people out there who do not have printers or it is so expensive to print on their printers or it's complicated and they just don't wanna, you know, they don't wanna go into Etsy, they don't wanna find files, they don't wanna have to find how to download, how to save, how to print, get the wireless to work, you know what I mean? They just don't wanna do any of that. They're just done. You know, they just want the pictures. I get it, I hear you. And I have answered your call. And yes, 
Um, I do have a print and mail service. Um, there is some information uh, if you on my, in my drop down description box, you can read all about it. Basically two things. You only pay one price and that includes 10 digi kits, which includes um, 10 um, did, okay, 10 digikits, I said that. Uh, but that gives you 50 pages because each digikit is five pages. All I need from you is the list of names of the digikits. So you can send that list to me via email to pam at thepaperoutpost.com or you can send the list to me via Etsy message. And all you do is buy the print and mail option. You do not need to buy the individual kits, um, just the one. And that does include free priority uh, shipping. Ta-da! There we go. Not that bad. All right. Um, uh, okay, and um, Pat Valenzuela asks, um, and she's referring to the world's easiest envelope for junk journals, three ways to decorate it. She says, I love how you play and have fun. If it doesn't turn out, so what? Fix it. I'm with you. I'm totally with you. Um, yeah, just move forward. Move through it. Don't let it stop you. Don't get stuck. You know what? Because if you looking at you're looking at it as if it's a piece of trash at that point, you've got nothing to lose. You have only things to gain if you move forward. If you stop, if you give up, you've immediately limited yourself to where you are at at this moment. You either accept the project as is or you're going to throw it away or do something like that. Tragedy, tragedy. Um, why not just play the heck with it and see um, the heck out of it and see what see what happens, see what comes of it. Um, don't be afraid. Use your colors, use your papers. Okay. Um, okay, we're going to make another one. Okay, let's see what we're going to do. I really like this one. This is just a punch out from a field guide. I had a little, uh, 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 what do you call those things? A journal card punch shape. And here's another little um, label punch shape. Let's see if I can marry these two. Make them maybe interesting and we can rotate them. No, nope, they don't want to go together. That's okay. I'll find somebody else. So much pressure when you guys are watching. <laughs> okay, how about this one? Trees of North America. Oh, that's very nice. Okay, now we can put the tree one in here. We just tuck that in. How about that? There we go. It's almost a cluster. And we can easily turn clusters into altered paper clips. Okay, so let's just assemble this guy. Okay, first of all, I think I'm going to ink him a little bit. I probably have enough ink on here. I really wet up my brown ink pad. It just yields so much more ink when I wet it a little bit. I mean, I know I have lots of ink in there. It just gets dry very easily and very quickly. I don't know how it gets dry in our humid Florida, but it gets dry. And then I think maybe I'll leave these two the same. Maybe the back one, maybe, maybe just a little, just for fun. Now the back page, this little piece of paper is a little bit stiff, so I probably don't need to do too much there. No, not too much. Not. Not too much of it. Sonny? You're right here. He's right here. He says he has something to say. Are you ready? Not yet. Okay. Prepare yourself, son. Okay. <laughs> okay. That little fuzz bun. All right. Here we go. I'm going to use a big one this time. Let's say put the little piece, little loop on the inside. I don't know why. I just think, I don't know why, actually. I just kind of roll with that. Um, then I'm going to put this here, but then I'm going to sandwich this one in here. So I'll put this one in first. Maybe I'll just randomly put it in somewhere. Okay, let's put some glue down. That's a good place to start when you don't know what... Oh, you're way over there. What are you doing way over there? Oh, that's a little close. Okay, what's going on here? Oh, uh, oh, uh, uh, really? Okay. Okay, uh, no. Hit, hit. That's a good spot. Hey, eh, there you go. Okay, I got my glue down. Maybe there. Now I'm going to look where my, my paper clip is oriented because that's going to give me up and down. Okay, that's going to give me up and down. Now do that. Hey, that's kind of cute. All right, totally do that. And you could use a glue stick here or something like that. Just, I really like working with Fabrifix. I, everybody has their own paper clue. I, I don't, I am, I am not a gluist. No, no, I'm not. Um, I like all glue. <laughs> okay, actually, I really do like Fabrifix. You know that. Okay, I don't have to say that anymore. All right, um, there, done. Done. That was easy. Okay. Next question. Here we go. Um, this is a very good question. Uh, Peggy Jones asks, this, she was watching my beet juice and do it yourself pink dye video. She says, can you use beet dye for paper? I feel like I've already answered this question once. I'm not sure. Maybe I just read it and I thought, oh, that's a good question. Um, Peggy, yes, yeah, absolutely. You can. And, uh, it works really well. Um, I would highly recommend it. I'm just going to grab random things here. What the heck? And uh, it uh, gives a beautiful color. It's different than avocado dyeing. Um, 
It's a different depth of the color with the beet juice, uh, but it's beautiful in its own right, and I highly recommend it. And then I would make some nice beet salad and eat the beets because the beets are really good. I use the canned beets and use the beet juice out of that because I guess I'm a lazy crafter and it's it's already done. I don't have to boil it or anything. You know what I mean? Ready to go. And uh, oh, that's kind of cute. I like that little um, collage of compositry here. Oh my gosh, oh, I'm getting all official. Um, has anybody seen the new Top Gun yet? Yeah, yeah. My, I have to admit, my husband and I wa watched the old one. Oh my gosh. Okay, all I'm saying, it was just as good as I remember when I was a teenager, and it's probably been that long since I've seen it. But yeah, I think I fell in love with Tom Cruise all over again. Sorry, honey. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, I just, I don't know, it was just really, it was just fun to watch, brought back a lot of old memories. And um, good times, you know, good times. And uh, so I'm, I'm looking forward to seeing the new one. I have not seen it yet. Okay, truth be told, we actually bought tickets for the one, the new one last night. And then we totally forgot we bought tickets and we were eat, sitting home eating dinner. Chomp, chomp, chomp. And finally one of us goes, oh my God, we're supposed to be at the movies because we never go to the movies. You know, we're always like, sitting there watching Netflix or something. <laughs> And uh, um, where, where am I going to stick this? I need something on the back. Okay. Oh, let's see. Okay, I'm just going to have to get a different piece of paper. Let me get a piece of paper. Paper, anything. I'll take anything at this point. Okay, this is a piece of book page, I think. What is this? It's either a piece of copy dyed paper. It looks like very old something, like really old, like not like something I made old. But I think it's kind of cool. I think I can just tear this. Uh, this will work fabulously, fabulously, I tell you. Okay. Mm hmm. There, I like that. Yeah, that's kind of nice right there. Hmm? Maybe we should put it like this. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I haven't seen it yet, but I'm, I'm looking forward to it. Don't tell me. Don't tell anybody what it's about. If it's good, like, I don't want to know. I don't want to know any of the details. Let me go see it first. I won't say anything if I see it. If you guys want to go see it, um, I'll keep my big yapper shut. Okay, that's like, that's cute. I might, this time, it might require some stickles. Am I even showing you what I'm doing on the video here? Sorry, sorry, bad crafter. Um, yeah, that's very good. You want a paper clip? All right, if you must, if you must, we'll just paper clip you. No fuss, my goodness. All right, who's got a question? All right, let's see. Okay. Um,. Let's see. Becky B has a question. Becky B asks, uh, and she's asking on the make pretty paper for junk journals, fast and easy tips and techniques shown. Hi, Becky B. How you doing? <laughs> um, okay. She says, I have a question for you, Pam. Um, what is the difference between distress oxide sprays and dist distress oxide reinkers? And could you use the distress oxide sprays for reinking a Tim Holtz ink pad if you if you don't have the re-inkers, um, I have the mini distressed ink pads and two bottles of distress oxide sprays. I hope I made sense. Thanks for sharing Sunny's adorable face and personality, and thank you for being you. Take care and God bless. Um, sincerely, Becky B. from Arkansas. Okay, let me answer this as best as I can. But basically, okay, so distress ink is um, dye. Distress oxide is dye plus pigment. Um, distress ink dries faster. Distress oxide dries slower. Distress ink gives you a nice intense color. Distress oxide gives you a more intense, um, vibrant color. Um, and the distress oxide also takes forever to get through a pad because the pigment is so intense um, it, it, pigment doesn't dilute down the way dye does. Uh, pigments are like little tiny particles. So um, yes, you can add more water or, or fluid, but they are still their whole little particle. So um, I think you get more bang for your buck here if you don't mind waiting a few extra seconds for something to dry. You can also spritz these with water and it will, like if you stamp spritz and then hold it up it, the color will spread down it will bloom a little bit more beautifully than the inks on their own so that's a lot of fun there's a million and one different things you can do with these okay let me see if i actually answered your question what is the difference between distress oxide sprays and distress oxide reinkers okay let me get a reinker hold on i have one of those little gizmos let me see 
Let it go far. I'm right here. Okay. 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 I'm shaking it up. Okay. This is Walnut Stain Distress Oxide. This is a re inker Okay. So this, it, I, do, I have one somewhere. Oh, well, this isn't the exact same color, but let's say it was. Let's say this was Distress Oxide Walnut Stain. Okay. Then I have the Distress Oxide Walnut Stain re -inker. The The only difference is this one has a little pad with the square shape, and this is the juice that's in the pad. So if this gets um, low on juice, you can go ahead and squirt this. I would say probably squirt it about three to five times across like this. Let it soak in. Uh, then you've reloaded your pigment and your dye on the pad. So you're ready to go again. You can totally use it straight from here. This is the same stuff. Like let's say you want to, you have one of those Tim Holtz glass mats, like uh, 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 this thing. You can, you can put a little blop on there and add some water and do some fun things and techniques and mop up paper um, with it and do all sorts of cool things. Um, but that's really the difference. This is just the juice that goes on the pad. This, the re is the juice that goes on the, the pad, the oxide pad. I would recommend using o Distress Oxide re on Distress Oxide pads. Don't, don't use them on the ink pads. It might go funky or it, it, it's just gonna, it'll probably be fine, honestly, but it's, um, uh, I would keep like with like. And just so you, you're, uh, you have some, you know what you're working with. Because you never know, like three years from now, you, you might want to do a particular technique, but you've muddied the water, shall we say, by commingling them. God, sounds like something I would do. Um, okay, that I might. <laughs> I don't think I've ever used this. That's the thing about the, the, I don't know, is this anybody else's experience? But I have a hard time actually using one of these up. Yeah, if I leave the, the lid off, they do get dry. And I have to come along and... I think technically I, I spritz them with water, honestly, because I know there's dye in there and the dye will react with water. And they're supposed to be water friendly to be able to use with water. So I don't think you need anything fancy to reactivate these. Now, can you use glycerin and water with the oxides? I don't know. I don't think I've ever done that. I think I just have my old handy dandy, ever trustworthy, always at the ready. Here it is water squirt bottle and I just give it a couple I give it a couple squirts and uh, I just go I'm just off and running and, and nothing is holding me up I'm very happy with these products Tim um, you have done an excellent job one day I will crack open this look it's even separating into like probably that's the ink and that's probably the uh, pigment down there because I just haven't used them of course I had to buy 47 because I thought I would absolutely need them but they are such a good product that it takes a while to go through Okay, so these are little felt pieces. These are cute, aren't they? I didn't know I had these. Look at how cute they are. They would be so fun to... Let's put something on here. Okay, maybe we'll do something with contrast. All right, what's that little an injured butterfly? That's an injured butterfly. We need to... He needs some help. Let's see if we put something else on here. with you on there. That's kind of cute. Oh, that's good. Maybe we get a wing. Oh, <gasps> yes. Let's do that. Okay, so, yeah. You never know. I got to get the... The paper clip in there. Get the paper clip in there. Okay, okay. Here we go. Getting the paper clip. What time it was okay. Um, let's get it in there. Come on. You got a 47 of them here. Okay. Putting the skinny little th little loop on the inside. Okay, it's in, it's in. And then a little glue. This we need some glue. Okay, let's just put it down. Glue down. Glue down. And then the wing of our little angel girl. Oh, that's really cute. How cute is that? See, you never know. You think you got a little piece or part of something and it doesn't make sense. And all of a sudden, it's rescued. Yep. That's how it goes. Yeah, that's called crafting. Um, yeah. So sometimes just start. Just You don't know where to start. Just start. Yeah, just start with anything. Grab a couple pieces and put them together and just say, okay, maybe I don't know where to start today with something. It looks like she's sitting in front of the moon. Isn't that pretty? Oh. Yeah. <laughs> Okay, so, um, oh, my goodness, what are these? Little paper cutouts, 50 cents. Wow, that's expensive, I think. Um, it would be worth getting your own little paper puncher and punching these out because I hope, I, did, I didn't pay 50 cents for them, no. What do we have in here? We have all sorts of little shapes. Oh, this looks like something I'm supposed to construct. This looks like it's like supposed to become a flower or something. Oh, let's see if we can make a, 
Um, let me ask, let me answer another question. Okay, thank you, Becky B. That was awesome. Okay, we now have um, from the video tips for snippet rolls for junk journals. So or no so step by step into tu tu tutorial. Um, Alicia Paper Whispers asks, so beautiful, Pam. I have a little request. I have the same sewing machine you do, but I don't know how to adjust how wide I can do the stitches. Could you show that? I'm sure other people would benefit too. Sure, why not? Okay, hold on. I'm going to take a little movement here. I've got my sewing machine right here. And all sewing machines are a little bit different, but everybody has some kind of button that's similar to this. Okay, I'm just going to, oh boy, I'm going to take this out. If I disappear, it's the end of the video, and we'll see you next time. And if not, we'll figure this out together. Okay, here we go. All right, here we are. Going over here. Here's the sewing machine. It's a brother. What have I got? Okay, I've got these. Now, I don't know if you can see. Can you see this? Okay, this top number, 2.5. That, see that long line and then a short line? That's telling me... Get it in closer there, Pam, so she can see. Um, how wide apart your stitches are. So you go over here and you hit the plus and you make that number get bigger. If you want, and it's not... No, I can take it all the way up to five and I use five a lot. Um, that means your stitches are as wide as they possibly can be apart. So your stitches are long stitches, long stitches, okay? So if you want your stitches, uh, maybe I'm, she, she's asking wide. I just went to show how wide I can do the stitches. Okay, so if you want width of your stitch, it's the one below it. That, see how that starts with a zigzag really wide and then it gets skinny? Right, so if you want wider, where's my finger? Go plus, plus, plus. You can go all the way up to five as well. And that makes your stitch wider across. Go to your stitching back and forth like that. Like let's say a zigzag stitch. Instead of going eh, 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 it's going to go eh, 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 like that. Does that, that was really, really uh, professional, wasn't it? I know. Okay, hold on. So I think most uh, sewing machines have some version of those two little adjustments. Stitch length stitch width. Yeah. So, um, yeah, there you go. That's really all I have to say about that. That's the, that's, it's not that hard. Start playing with it on your machine and do a few test runs on some uh, fabric or some paper so you can get a feel for what it looks like. You can also increase, increase the length and the width and see what that looks like. Um, if you increase the length or, and the width, especially if you increase the length, it cuts your sewing time down. Yeah, so if let's say you're doing some mass making and you're trying to sew around some rectangles over and over and over and over again, yeah, lengthen that stitch because that's going to really help you. And it's better for your craft because perforated paper will tear or break more easily. So, I don't know, I just feel like I want to mush these for some reason. Um, but if uh, you perforate them with a, lo oh, a longer stitch, um, between, you know, like the stitches that are longer, um, also known as a longer stitch, um, that will, uh, that, then your paper won't tear as easily. So that's kind of the trick it there. Okay, so got that. Okay, that's very nice. Oh, I like that a lot. All right, well, I don't know what we're doing here. It's just kind of fun. So somebody painstakingly punched these out for me. Thank you. Thank you. I, I really, I love this. This is very cute. Um, I bet, you know, if you painted these with Mod Podge first, that they would have a little bit more, um, uh, like stiffness to them, a little bit more uh, t like thickness, they, they would stay in place better. Yeah, they would be like, you know, a little, like, you know, have some, you know, substance to them. Okay, I have no idea how am I going to get these together. Let's see. Okay, all right, put that there. I think I'm probably just going to glue them together. That's right, we have the glue, we can do this. All right, um, let's pop over to another question. This is from the video called Junk Journal Flip Through Nature's Book Miss of Mystery Part 1. Christine Crow asks, on your fabric tags, do you put cardboard in the middle or only fabric? Please. Hmm. You know how long ago that I did that video? <laughs> this is a long time. I was about to think in the very beginning. Okay, I'm trying to think. Um, okay, most tags, I like to give tags... Tags can be anything, actually. I mean, really, when you think about it, we write on printer paper, we write on copy paper, we write on co college rule paper. So if your tags, you're wondering how thick they should be, I think they can be pretty thin, honestly. I've done some 
rubber stamping on plain white paper or coffee dyed paper, you know, just regular printer paper thickness. And I think they come out really beautiful and they're great to tuck in um, behind things. They give a nice uh, little blank palette back there. And um, so you don't have to make thick tags if that's the question, but you can absolutely do uh, you can wrap around something to give the tag a little bit more structure or if you're making a pocket if you want to give it a little bit more structure um, it, uh, it's really personal choice and um, try it different ways and see what feels good to you uh, that would be my best recommendation because I think that um, both will fly honestly uh, I've done both and it just depends on the circumstance if um, I've got an overfilled journal already not that that would ever happen to me. Maybe I don't want to do a lot of thick tags because I know I know I'm going to run into trouble. You know what I mean? Um, but if I uh, have a very uh, you know if I have a lot of room or something like that, yeah. Or I'm just starting out and I just want to put in some base tags or um, um, you know just pockets and things like that and a bunch of tucks. Yeah, I might put in some thicker ones um, or some removable. Sometimes you can do those thicker because they can be removed and pretty much tags are removable. Um, you can just easily, oh, this would this be very nice. Yeah, let's do that. Oh, that's, isn't that, that's a very pretty paper clip, isn't it? That's just awesome. All right. Um, now this one, oh, okay, maybe I'll do that. Okay, instead of ruining the design, I mean, I could slide that up there, but I don't want to do that. Or if I put the paper clip on here, the paper clip's going to show. So instead, I'll do a hidden paper clip. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll use a small little piece of who knows what? Run no risk. There you go. Run no risk. We'll put that on the back so they can look at that and ponder and wonder. And I'll put that down. I'm putting the little loop on the inside. I'm putting a bunch of glue. This looks like it's from a very old uh, vintage magazine. That's what I would guess. Yes. And I'll just pop that to there. And it pop a roo. That's it. It's a papa. And uh, yeah, and it easily sticks. No problem at all. And I think I need a central point. Let me get a little bling of something, of whatnot, of who knows what is where. And maybe I'm, yeah, just for good measure, I'm gonna put a little dollop of glue there in the center. And then I'm gonna try and, that's a little bling piece, just a little black. Very pretty, right? Very cute, very pretty. Uh, basics, you know, basic uh, car black cardstock, some uh, book page. I think this looks like um, dictionary paper. And then just inked it up. Very cute, right? Yeah. I mean, adorbs. Totally adorbs. Where are we? Okay, we are. Time to wrap it up. So, thank you very much for spending some time here. Let me back up so you can see my entire mess. Um, there we go. Uh, oh, yes. Hello. Uh, Mom? Mom? Did you forget somebody? Hello? Hello, Mom? 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 Okay, I'm, I'm right here, son. I'm right here. Um, you have anything to tell the people today? Yes, 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 I do. I have a puppy. <laughs> okay, all right, fine. All right, now, is your hair all right? <laughs> you look like you just, like you just woke up, son. I did. I just woke up. <laughs> I always just wake up. Okay, everybody, here's the deal. Okay, first of all, whoop, oh, that's too close, Mom. Too close. Oh, Mom, I'm, please. Jeez, Mom. It, man. Okay, everybody, I'm a little embarrassed to say, but I had pizza. I had pizza for lunch. Yes, yes, I did, and it was wonderful. Um, we went to a little pizza place. What, what, what am I looking over here? I have no idea. Um, oh, what's over there? Oh, head back. All right, we, um, we went to a pizza place, and we sat outside, and um, they burnt our pizza. Yeah, they, they didn't even show it to us, so they just came out, and they said, I'm so sorry, your pizza. <laughs> i got to rearrange you, son. But your pizza is burnt. And I said, wait. Give me the pizza. I'll take it. And we said, no, no, no. But they actually, they had already started cooking us another pizza, right? Yes. Yes, they did. And was like, I would like to just say that it was Sunshine's first taste of pizza. And although normally he doesn't get pizza because it's not on his healthful list, I would just like to say that it was fabulous. <laughs> really? Really? Okay. Did you have a lot? No, not nearly as much as I would have liked to have had, but it was fabulous. <laughs> okay, well, we'll put that in the tank for future references. Thanks, everybody. Have a happy crafty day. Bye. <laughs> okay, thank you, son. Um, well, there you go. From little, little, uh, he's got pizza breath. What can I say? Okay. All right. He got a little of the crust. Just a, just a smidge. Maybe a little piece of sausage. That was it. Okay. <laughs> Um, all right then, everybody. Um, thank you so much for being here. I love, 
love, love, love reading your questions. And um, um, it just really gives me an opportunity to hear what's going on in the machinations of your mind. It's amazing. And um, so, uh, yeah, if you haven't signed up for my free monthly email newsletter, hey, what are you waiting for? You get a free digital image emailed to you every month. You get a checklist of supplies, a note from the bookmaker, which explains what a junk journal is and how to use it. And you get um, um, a page of ideas list. And um, there's something else in there too. I can't exactly remember what it is. I think that might be everything. Uh, but anyway, these are the things that we made today. Those were all fun. Oh yeah, we just like very, very wonderful. It's fun to make things with you guys. Didn't really show you that very well, did I? No, 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 not at all. Thank you, Dookie. And um, I have an Etsy shop with all sorts of fun things in it. If you want to check that out, please feel free. Um, I have an Amazon shop. If you're looking for favorite tools and supplies and things you see me use here on the the channel. Um, I have a merchandise shop. If you like the phrase create with reckless abandon and you would like to see that on a t-shirt or a sweatshirt or a mug or a, a tote bag or a zip hoodie, I got you covered. And also I have a podcast that comes out every Tuesday and Thursday. It's um, on Anchor or you can also find it on Spotify, Apple, Google Podcasts, all those podcast like places. And um, I'm in my fourth year now so there's lots of material and I cover topics such as um, answering your crafty questions, junk journaling, paper crafting, and life of a crafter. So you just never know what you're going to get. And um, um, I think that's pretty much it. So thank you very much for spending some time with me. Um, my videos come out Mondays, Wednesdays, Fridays, and Saturdays, 7 a.m. Eastern Time. Don't know if I said that. But remember, most of all, that fun can be simple and create with reckless abandon, everybody. I hope you made some fun altered paper clips with me today. Take care. Woo Bye.